And now we'll see the phosphoric acid manufacturing. So this is the PFD for phosphoric acid manufacturing. So what we have, we have the phosphate rock, which we grind in 20 mesh. Uh, we will grind up to the 20 mesh screen. Then we are adding this, the hydrochloric acid. So whatever this CO2, HF and HCl, they are produced, they are sent back and they will be scrapped for the acid recovery. Then here we are adding the solvent and then solvent we are adding in counter current, counter current manner. So here the mixture will be digested and the, sulfur, the phosphoric acid will be produced. Then we can add the HCl for the makeup. So if you see the dark line, it will show the how the phosphoric acid is going. So this will give the phosphoric acid stream. So when mixture is digested and we, we are using the solvent to recover the phosphoric acid, then it will go to the mixer settlers. So here if you can see the mixer settlers A, B, C and D. So in the A, the CaCl2 and CaF2, that will be taken care in the mixer settler A. Whereas B will remove the traces of Ca, Ca plus 2 ions. Then in C, we are adding the water where the H3PO4 will be extracted in water. And in D, the water, the HCl and the solvent wake up that are again returned back to the mixer settler A. So in this one, the mixing and settling will, will produce the phosphoric acid and whatever the solvent and HCl that will be recycled back. So here, the whatever the phosphoric acid which is extracted by the water that will fade to the, the evaporators. So here we can see the 1, 2 and 3 evaporators where in the first one, the alcohol or the solvent which we are using, it will be evaporated and then we can fade again to the reaction zone. In the second one, we will get the weak HCl and then we can have the uh, HCl for the makeup. And in third evaporated, we get the concentrated HCl to makeup. And from the third, we can have the phosphoric acid, which would have the, the iron and arsenic content lower than the 100 ppm. So here, we are digesting mixture for some time and then we are feeding it to the mixer settlers where in this sea we get the phosphoric acid extracted in water and then we can fed to the evaporators where we can uh, recover the solvent back and we can have the phosphoric acid which is 80% concentrated. Then here the whatever the um, solvent is there we can evaporate and we can use for the other, other reaction zone. So next thing we will see is the electric furnace process. So it is direct conversion at plant side. So chemical reaction is phosphate rock plus the sand and with the carbon we will get the phosphorus and the carbon, di carbon monoxide and we get the calcium silicate. Then the phosphorus and the carbon monoxide and in uh, oxygen we get the phosphorus pentoxide and then that phosphorus pentoxide with the reaction with water we get the phosphoric acid. So the if we see the reaction at once, then the phosphate rock with the help of the sand and the coke, we get the phosphoric acid as a final product. Then the raw materials will be low grade crushed rock and the coke as a reductant and sand as the flux. So phosphate rock, sand and the coke we require to carry out the reaction to produce the phosphoric acid. So this is as a direct conversion at the plant site. So here we require one ton of 100% uh, sub, sub, uh, the phosphoric acid if we are producing in 90% yield and 2-3 tons of byproduct slag. Then we require the phosphate rock which is 28% phosphor pentoxide, 2.9 tons. Sand we require 0.85 tons. In coke breeze 0.5 ton. Air 3600 newton meter cube. The electricity consumption will be 4800 kilowatt hour. Then the carbon hydride consumption will be 8 kgs. And the plant capacities will vary from 60 to 200 tons a day of 100% phosphoric acid per furnace. And generally a plant will have 1 to 4 furnaces. So here what happens? So first part is same as the phosphorus manufacture until vapors leave the furnace. So it is same as we seen earlier. So oxidation is accomplished in the downstream and the phosphor pentoxide removed by spraying the hot gases with water. Then the crude 85% acid is given by H2O4 treatment to remove entrained, entrained uh, calcium sulphate, then powder silica addition to remove hydrochloric acid and the counter current scrubbing with H2S to remove arsenic that is AS3 and the sludge removed by sand filter. So here 
we have seen the earlier process to manufacture elemental phosphorus. So that is converted into the phosphorus pentoxide. And then with this help of the water, we can convert them into the, sulfur, the phosphoric acid. The phosphoric acid is concentrated by means of the uh, sulfuric acid. Then the silica we add to remove the uh, hydrofluoric acid in terms of the hydrofluoric silicates. And then we counter current scrubbing to remove the arsenic, which is major impurity. And the sludge which is formed, we can remove by the use of the sand filter. Then in this one, major engineering problems will become the complete removal of acid mist and the material of construction. So here the material construction, as we have seen earlier, the lining we need, rubber line or the steel reactor we need to prevent the corrosion due to the phosphoric acid. So material of construction will be the same as the earlier one. And the other thing we have to see is the complete removal of the acid mist. As we are using the acid over uh, the acid over here, and the direct addition of the water will create the mist. So we have to take care while addition of the water and the forming the, the phosphoric acid in the manufacturing. Now we will see the electric furnace process and we will see the oxidation and hydration of elemental phosphorus. So the phosphorus is converted into the phosphor pentoxide in combustion chamber where we can have the water to produce the phosphoric acid from the phosphorus pentoxide. So here we require the elemental phosphorus which we can obtain from the earlier process and we require the air and we require the steam to heat it. Then the quantity requirements being 1 ton of 100% of phosphoric acid in 90% yield. Then we require the elemental phosphorus 0.33 ton. Air we require 1260 Newton meter cube. Water and steam is not definite. We can change depend upon the condition of the reaction zone. Then here what happens? The phosphorus, elemental phosphorus retained to 50 degrees Celsius and meter by water displacement to a steam ejector and atomization section of the combustion nozzle. So elemental phosphorus converted into phosphorus pentoxide and then compressed air is injected around the steam atomized. Then phosphor droplets where exothermic reaction raises temperature up to 2000 degrees centigrade. Then the gaseous oxide partially hydrated are treated the same manner as described earlier in the electric furnace gas to obtain 85% of phosphoric acid. The same thing happened over here. The phosphorus converted into the phosphor pentoxide and then we are adding water to convert into the phosphoric acid. And its concentration can be maintained as we see in the earlier process. Now the next part of the phosphate that is calcium phosphate. So this is also the major part of the fertilizer industry. So this is used as a fertilizer then two grades we obtain that is super phosphate. So this is by reacting phosphate rock with sulfuric acid contains 60 to 20 percent of phosphorus pentoxide. Then triple, triple super phosphate by reacting phosphate rock with phosphoric acid which contain 40 to 50 percent of phosphorus pentoxide. And then only super phosphate is allowed to produce in India due to the economic reasons. So other things are not, not desirable to produce in India because of the economic consideration. So people try to have the triple superphosphate and increase the phosphorus content in it. But India it's not, um, it's not permitted and we can have the uh, major amount of phosphorus in superphosphates only. So we'll see the superphosphate manufacturing. So first thing is acidulation means the water of the phosphate rock that is ca 3 p for twice and the calcium fluoride mixture. So the phosphate rock we are acidulating with help of the sulfuric acid and we get is the superphosphate and the phosphoric acid that we can take care by means of the sand. And the silicon impurity removal, so the hydrofluoric acid we can remove by use of the sand and we get the hydrofluoric silicate. And then we can remove it by use of the NaCl. So in PFD you can see the acceleration and then we can see the NaCl to remove the SiO2 impurities. So raw metal we require the phosphate rock and we require the sulfuric acid. So 30 to 35 percent phosphorus pentoxide we require in the phosphate rock whereas the acid use is 50 to 55 bome or 62 to 70 percentage of estosopor. Then if you are producing 1 ton of super phosphate then we require 0.5 to 0.6 tons of rock and we require 0.3 to 0.4 ton of the sulfuric acid. 
and the plant capacity will vary from 100 to 1400 tons a day. So if you see over here, the phosphate rock is crushed, then it in the ring roll mill is again um, the particle size is maintained, then whatever the uh, higher size particle they we are feeding back to it, then we are feeding to, then we are adding here 60 percent of sulfuric acid. So it will be crushed, then particle size will be maintained, and then we are adding the sulfuric acid over here. If we require, then we can add the ammonium sulfate into it. Then continuous blender, it will blend it, so this and this it will be blend, and the reaction mixture zone will be sent to the, sent for the forward. So here, the 24 hour storage require to assure the complete conversion of the reaction mixture. So what we are taking here, the rock phosphate and sulfuric acid, then we are keeping here for more time to ensure the complete reaction. And then whatever the hydrofluoric acid which we are getting, we are scrubbing to F recovery or we can send to the waste gas. So whatever we are getting over here, we are sending to the rotary granulator where ammonia is added. So rotary granulator it will be added, so nitrogen con content and the phosphate content will be maintained over here. Then we are drying here in a rotary dryer by passing the hot air at a high temperature and we get the super phosphate to bagging and shipping. Or we can have the phosphoric acid, so 65 percent of acid then we are feeding, then continuous blend reactor it will be reacted and then in rotary generator the ammonium phosphate is added in terms of ammonia and then we are uh, the uh, whatever the reaction mixture we are drying in a rotary dryer by passing up hot air what are the fine particles we are sending back to the uh, rotary granulator and we can have the triple superphosphate for bagging and shipping. So here we can either form the superphosphate or we can have the triple superphosphate in, in this reaction zone. So here what we take care of, we have to take care of the percentage of sulfuric acid. So here the time is, time is uh, required to carry out the complete conversion of the mixture zone and then we can have the super phosphate. So the time is the essential thing into this one. So next thing we will discuss is the ammonium phosphate. So here the mono ammonium phosphate which will have the NH4H2PO4, so molecular weight being 115, then melting point it decomposes, density it will have 1.80 gram per cc, then it is uh, 32, 32 gram per 100 cc at 15.5 degrees Celsius as the water solubility, whereas the diammonium phosphate, it will have the molecular weight of 132, it also decomposes after heating and it will have the density of 1.62 gram per cc and it is 131 gram per 100 cc at 15 degrees Celsius in a water. So chemical fertilizer, so mixture of ammonium phosphate and sulphate plus potash. So earlier we have seen the phosphoric acid, we add the sulphuric acid into it. Then by with the help of ammonia we are neutralizing it and then we are adding the KCl to maintain the ratio of NPK and that can be used as a mixed fertilizer. So here if we see the ammonia and phosphoric acid we get the NH4H2 HPO4, then the ammonia again reaction with this we can have the diammonium phosphate, then ammonia with the sulphuric acid can be neutralized and then we can get the diammonium sulphate here. So here the two principal steps are neutralization and the granulation. Then anhydrous liquid uh, ammonia is added beneath slurry level in the mixture of phosphoric and sulfuric acid. Then the reaction temperature goes up to 130 degrees Celsius. The ammonium vapor recycled to minimize the loss. Then slurry mixture with KCL and the total mixture is dry to get the moisture content less than 1 percent. So this drying we can have by 10 minute contact with 150 degrees centigrade hot air. So this happens in the, uh, the phosphate manufacturing. The next thing we will discuss is nitrophosphate manufacturing. So this is a mixture of ammonium nitrate and the various phosphate made by acidulation of phosphate rock with nitric acid alone with a combination of sulfuric acid. So if you see the reaction, the phosphate rock with nitric acid and then neutralized by ammonia, we get the calcium nitrate then CH4 which is acid soluble and we get the ammonium nitrate over here. Then the second step is nit nitric acid sulfuric acid digestion, that is ammonia neutralization. So here the 
uh, happen that ammonia, the nitric acid, ammonia and the sulfuric acid, uh, they will they will neutralize forming CHPO4 and the ammonium nitrate. Then the conversion of monocalcium phosphate. So here we get CHO4 plus sulfuric acid, we get CH2PO4 twice which is water soluble and we get the calcium sulfate. And the last reaction is carbon nitric process where the rock with nitric acid neutralized by ammonia we get CHPO4 and the ammonium nitrate. So here it is similar to the phosphoric acid production by weight process. Then mixture is digested with 25 to 40 percent of nitric acid. Then digestory pumped to an ammoniated tank where chemical reactions are completed. Slurry granulated and dried in a rotary equipment. Screen in conventional classifying circuit. And removal of calcium nitrate and corrosion are main engineering problems in this one. If it is sodium phosphate, so the classification of structure it is metaphosphate, then hexametaphosphate, polyphosphate, pyrophosphate, and the orthophosphate. So we can classify depend upon the structure. Then method of production. So here generally we will see the STPP that is sodium tripolyphosphate or Na5P3O10. So what happens? The Na2CO3 with phosphoric acid we get the STPP. So it will have the molecular weight of 368 degrees Celsius. It appears in a white powder. It has a solubility of 12.8 gram per 100 cc of water at 20 degrees Celsius which increases to 33 gram at 100 degrees Celsius. And the pH of 1% of STPP solution is 9.7. If you are producing 1 ton of STPP at 99% yield, then we require 8.81 Na2O which is 58% and the phosphoric acid we require 1 ton, then the plant capacity will be 20 to 150 tons a day. So we will see the PFD for STDP manufacturing. So here we have seen the raw materials are the soda ash and the phosphoric acid. So here the phosphoric acid and the, and the soda ash they will be diluted and they will be sent to the mixing tank. So here the uh, phosphoric acid is diluted and here you can see the soda ash is diluted. Then we take in a mixing tank where we want, we want to have the ratio of Na2O uh, to P2O5 in 1.67. So this is required to get the STVP of 1 mole to 2 mole. So here the reaction mixture it will be held in holding tanks then it will be filtered then it is sent to the fin tank where it is dried and then the salt particles are cooled where they are grinded and they can store as the sodium tripolyphosphates and whatever the fun particle they are recycled back to the drying zone. So here sodium phosphate solution, so one mole of monosodium to two mole of disodium phosphate that we want to produce. So this ratio is highly desirable. So this uh, phosphoric acid soda ash mix then they are hold to have the reaction complete, then they are fed, filtered, then they are dried, then the solids are cooled and we can send to the sodium triphosphate and we can have them for the shipping and bagging. So we will refer the dried one for this one and in the next we will discuss about the floral industry.